Welcome back, my fellow duplicants, to the Ultimate Automation Challenge. Now, in today's episode here, we're going to be taking a good look here at the Ultimate Automated Storage and Retrieval System. This is basically a giant vending machine. It is a larger version of what I have going on up here, which is a uh, essentially an auto sweeper that sorts everything into different storage compactors and then can unload it and deliver it to various spots on the base so or in the base <laughs> and if we take a look at the conveyor overlay there's basically going to be a lot of zigzagging and stuff in the background but the main idea is that everything that goes in goes in right on over here or maybe in a couple spots but right now it's just in one spot and then these arms are going to pick it up and put it into these storage compactors and then hopefully we'll be able to sort everything inside of here and then have a couple of spots over here on the left where that'll feed out to areas that need dirt, areas that need a filtration medium, and then areas that need metal, like the metal refinery up here. So since my last video, I've played a little bit more. And what you can see here is I've now put a transit tube access point right here inside of the storage compactor area. The reason I decided to do this is because when I was really starting to look at it and look at all the conveyor rails that would have to go on over to another spot where it's just like a giant vending machine, maybe they pick it up here. There's just a ton, a ton of conveyor rail that has to be built, you know, built and then built and then built and then built just constantly in order to get like one resource in each one of those spots where you could pick it up. And it just didn't seem like that was worth it. If you could just go ahead and take a transit tube access point right here and just pick it up somewhere really close by, like a storage compactor right there. So I'm going to use these loaders here to just sort it out to automated systems in the base. And then if the duplicate needs something, they can just run down here, use the access point, and, and get what they need and move on. So one thing that's interesting, I'm not sure exactly where it's all coming from, but there's just a bunch of carbon dioxide down here. I'm thinking maybe it's coming from the suits here, but I'm not 100% sure. The point is, I have a lot of carbon dioxide, which means I could possibly have a lot of crude oil just waiting to be tapped into here. Okay, so one of the other things I was working on here is, is this, an expanded food storage unit. So... Know that I've had this area over here on the right, and that's where I've done a lot of my cooking. The thing is, I pretty much tap out at around 3,000 calories right there. So I'd like to take that up to the next level and kind of expand it and cook up a lot more of the raw resources that I have and be able to store it in a nice, safe room. So I built this inside of here out of gold tiles because why not? It gives off some nice decor. <laughs> The decor around this is anywhere from 60 to 100. Ooh, 145, man. I'm going to cheer up every time you go to eat something. Okay, so there was a couple of comments talking about what happens when you start to get, like, polluted dirt and whatnot in this area. Well, my plan is that I'm going to have a high-pressure zone down here. It's just simply going to be an area where you're going to use an exosuit to get into because most of the areas I go to, I have an exosuit. And if it does give off a little polluted oxygen, let's say it's a little lower pressure, I have already have all of these deodorizers in here. So I don't think I'm going to end up with too many germs once I get all of this polluted oxygen out of there. So plan A is pretty much high pressure. Plan B is that I just have enough oxygen down here to where it's not a big deal. Of course, I could also fill it with carbon dioxide. But you can see how much slime lung I'm dealing with. It's fairly significant at the moment down here. If I had a chlorine geyser, I could just pump it full of that, but I don't have that. Now, as for Trashcan's other comment here, I'm not 100% sure about the extra heat that I might have to deal with, but high pressure does make things like Weezworts a little bit more effective as compared to if it was really low. It's not a massive difference that I know of. Oh, yeah, in case you guys were wondering, no, I have not built a rocket. It is... I mean, it's up here. You can see it's... The silo's almost ready. <laughs> For anything to be built in it. Uh, sorry, I've been enjoying my vacation. Battlefield Five came out. Are you kidding me? I have played every Battlefield on the PC. I know. Excuses. No, Marie. You were doing the Draco over there. I saw that. 
Glad you figured it out. Come on, Marie. Come on. Oh. <laughs> this is such a weird animation that they do. Whenever they're just flying across like stuff on top, they're like, mm, smack, smack. I mean, a training manual didn't really come with these exosuits, so they struggle a little bit. <laughs> so one thing I hope that gets fixed here is these uh, suits end up inside of the shipping arms, but for whatever reason, you can't really... I always seem to struggle with getting, getting them to come out. There is a new update that should be dropping in the next couple of days. I'm not sure what they're gonna add to the game. Maybe nuclear power. The last update was pretty major with all this space stuff that they've been doing. I mean, it did take two updates to really get it to where they were, but I know there's some unused materials. There's also a burner that we have yet to see that I've seen by like doing a little bit of like file digging and whatnot, or you guys have shared with me and all that stuff. So we might see that. That would be a way to burn off, like, refined carbon or something like that and oxygen to heat up a room or, or whatever. All right, dupes, you need to increase the priority of your wire building. All right, this is taking a little too long to get people in and out. It's, it's faster than just running off the two fly suits, but it should go a little faster. Okay, so one of the other techniques we could possibly do for storage compactors is if you build something like this, and then once these storage compactors are built, you come back and you deconstruct the floor. Then you can fit in a couple more storage compactors here. So if you build it from the top down and then destroy the floor underneath it, you can actually increase the density of your storage quite a bit. The thing is, I feel like that's kind of an exploit. So I don't do that in my base. Although I know a lot of people have commented, hey, you should probably do that just because of what you're trying to do here. Not only that, it doesn't cast a shadow uh, that you have to worry about with your auto sweepers. See how this can only reach to certain spots there? Hmm, I might have to move these arms around. We'll see. Doesn't look like this one is ever going to get anything. Hmm. I thought I had all that figured out. Hmm, maybe not. So if I put one here... Uh, looks like I kind of got to spread them out a little bit. Like do this right there and that. Man, these dupes found a transit tube and they're just flying these things all over my base. All right, so it is time to fire this thing up and see how it works. So what I want to store in here is going to be everything except for clothing because that seems to cause a problem. So yeah, let's try to store all of this. Just like that. Boom. That is crazy. Look at all these arms go. <laughs> um, okay, so now I want to work the sub-priorities here. This is obviously going to be priority one, which means everything that this can reach is going to be two. And then that's going to be three. Now here's where I might run into a problem because this is priority level nine over here. So I may not be able to load the same sort of priority. I might have to make a couple of rows of something a little different or whatnot. I might have made this one too many. And there's no way to disable sweeping. So I think people are going to sweep like crazy. I just made a priority level nine. How much is this thing blown up? Oh, oh, yeah. I would think a circuit would overload with all of this. Uh Oh, well, hold on circuits. We got a lot of sorting to do. Filtrations, they have to be set to priority level five. What? Yeah, well, that was a lot of stuff. Okay, so rather than a receptacle here, I need to convert that into a loader so that I can get all of this stuff out of here. Same goes for that chunk there. Yeah, so what I'm seeing here is that all of these are empty, but it's not quite working out as well as I'd hoped. Why? Because these arms up here can sort everything from right to left, but the ones down here can't quite reach. So there's this one row that's having an issue. Looks as if one issue I'm having is that I cannot fill my battery bank as quickly as I need it. So it's not so much that I don't have enough power being generated, it's that I can't distribute it quickly enough. Hmm. 
Interesting. It's always something, isn't it? So I think one thing I'm going to have to do here uh, before I have like a big issue of just every duplicate running around sweeping constantly is I think I'm going to have to change the priorities of who can sweep. I do have it set to be quite a bit higher for a lot of these people. But I'm going to disable a couple of them so that I don't end up with tons and tons of sweeping going on. All right, so here comes in some more material. You can see that. And now it's being sorted, and watch this. You can see it just moved from right to left. Yeah, you can see anything that hits this middle row here does not get moved. So it's just going from here to there. Meanwhile, the one on top is actually making its way all the way to the left. So I need to move those arms up a little bit. This is one power-hungry system, isn't it? Let's just take a look at the reports. What's going on here? Uh, power usage. Auto sweeper, 202 kilojoules so far. My Amazon sorting machine is kind of expensive to run. Although it is really cool. Lerda, how did you come down down here without an exosuit? Okay, so in order to make this function properly, I need more arms. I think I might also have to get rid of this last row over here on the left. I just don't think it's going to work the way it is currently. <laughs> I'm also going to need a lot more power. Holy moly. Well, if I'm not worried about pressure, hmm, I could just put a couple, uh, I could probably put a coal generator down here. How much coal do I have? 225 tons. Uh, ought to do it. Oh, I don't think I'd really want to run more of that. All right, so I'm going to pump some more power in using whatever hydrogen I have available. Well, who's getting burnt up here? Nicola, all right. How in the world? No, buddy. No, 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 no. How did you get up here without an exosuit? I've been over this like a thousand times. Uh, I see. Uh, darn it, these dupes. What, what would I ever do with you guys? All right, so now that you cooked yourself, Nicola, get in recovery. Okay, you can go this way, but you can't go that way. Cool? There's so much going on here. It's, what? <laughs> so this is going to be incredibly power hungry. If we just take a look at the reports, what do we, what do we have today? Ha! <laughs> ha! My, th my theory is <laughs> um, once we get most of this stuff out of here and into where it needs to go, it's going to be, you know, less demanding than what it is currently. So let me just empty all of these storage compactors. <laughs> because I can, let's try to sweep some of this up. That was 632 kilojoules. <laughs> uh, okay, I don't think I have a choice. Just to make this function, I need a little extra power. Although I can't automatically feed it from there. Oh yeah, you can. So if I am to be true with what I'm saying here, is I should really bring in coal to this as well. Everything feeds into the same spot. So it should just work like that. And then I'll have some storage there for coal. And then as it moves on, I'll be able to kind of put some of that. Oh man, it's getting even more crazy. Look at all the numbers on the screen. <laughs> I think I might just want to take this ladder and just bring it right in here so the dupes can just run down, do what they need to do, and then get out. And the germs have just about died off in that area, so I should be fairly safe to do that. Because then I could take this fire pole and just bring it down and they'll whoosh, and then go to wherever they need to go if they need to just get to it. I might also make doing this initial move of all of this stuff quite a bit faster. Actually, I could probably just destroy the floor. <laughs> There's a good idea! That'll save some power. Yeah, slime lung. It wasn't completely dead yet. 
You wanna, you wanna stop doing that real quick? I mean, the last thing I need is more oxygen in my base, but you know what? I mean, I'm trying to get enough power for everything, but it's not, not exactly happening. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna deconstruct the floor just because it's the right thing to do, even though it is going to bring in some slime lung. Look at all of that oxygen. And we're gonna pop a bunch of ears. <laughs> Hopefully before that happens, I'm going to rebuild the floor. Okay, I'm gonna have to have them ignore their schedules here just to get this done. I don't want too much oxygen getting into my base or it's just gonna be cycles and cycles of stress. Oh no, they fell through. All right, that's it. How much oxygen got in? No, you know, it, the pressure did not go up that much. Wow, look at this. All right, well, this is cool. It may be incredibly power hungry for a little while, but I think it's cool. <laughs> 766, it's gotta be some sort of record there, maybe. All right, well, there's a fair bit more work that needs to go into this just to kind of finish it off, but you know what? It's working out pretty good so far as far as doing pretty much what I want it to do. I need to work on sorting the things out at the end so that I can deliver it to where I need to deliver it inside my base. And probably gotta see just how power hungry this thing is once I, you know, once I stop feeding it loads and loads of stuff continuously. We'll see. But that'll have to happen in the next episode. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you guys have enjoyed this little episode here of Oxygen Not Included. If I've earned your subscription, then thank you so much for that. Stay awesome, guys. Peace. Brothgar out.